Welcome to the BCMA Show podcast. Today I am joined by a special guest, Artist Spotlight on Miss Taylor Wilkinson. How's it going, Taylor? It's going great. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. We definitely uh, we reached out to you, and we know you're busy. Uh, we wanted to get you on the show and, and, and do a spotlight on the background, and we know we have your song, Living the Life, on our top 40 and uh wanted to give the the fans a little background of you so you're originally from arkansas correct yes i am originally from a small town in arkansas um brinkley arkansas actually um but yeah no i really appreciate you for having me and putting me on y'all's top 40 that was made my day when i saw that just because i saw so many other artists that i love listening to and it was made my heart happy that somebody else liked my song too yeah, it definitely, we, I mean, we go off of streams on Spotify, it's, you know, and it's, uh, it was last week at number 24, and it's been on our chart for 12 weeks, and it's over 50,000 streams, so, I mean, it, it's doing, is it doing major success for you, you know? Yeah, more than, honestly, of this, not to underrate myself, but I just was really shocked um, and surprised by the amount of streams that it got so fast, uh, just because... Uh, that was my first single that I released, and um, I don't, you know, I'm unsigned, I'm an independent artist, and I don't have a huge following, so the fact that it's reached uh, that many people um, was super cool to me. Well, let's let's start out and do a little background. Okay, you, you were from right. Arkansas. At what age did you start, you know, getting into music, singing, or playing, or... So, I'm from, like I said, a small town in Arkansas, so there's not really, like, many opportunities to, I guess you would say, perform or kind of um, make a career out of, um, in the music industry, so I basically just grew up in my church, uh, singing there, and singing my church choir, and then we would have programs every year, and then uh, the older you get, you could go on a choir tour, and we would play, um, a couple places, a um, few different states, and so that was kind of fun, I guess, to me, to be in plays and singing, um, but also sing the national anthem at my uh, my high school, so that was something, I guess, that uh, that's kind of like my background that I had, and then I ended up, uh, I was actually singing the national anthem, I played basketball, and um, it was like one of the state championships, a man came up to me after I sang, and he told me about this, uh, it's called Delta State, and, uh, in Mississippi, in Clarksdale, wait, yeah, Clarksdale, Mississippi, Cleveland, Mississippi, and, um, they have a music institute there, and told me about it, and went to this summer program, and, um, kind of learned all about the behind the scenes of, you know, getting music recorded, and, producing, um, and writing, yeah, mm-hmm, cool. and so that's when it really sparked my interest that, like, okay like people do do this <laughs> yeah. and uh, so I kind of just that kind of really sparked my interest but I, it's really funny looking back um, I guess you would say songwriting kind of started after that for me professionally but um, before then I can just remember always just making up my own songs and singing them to my family and that kind of stuff but you know yeah. about 80 percent of the artists that I have on the show you know i all of them 100 percent independent artists you know but 80 percent i'd have to say have all have the same beginnings of singing in church growing up and choir and, mm-hmm. and, and i think that's such a great way you know for you, you to talent to be recognized i guess and for you know the youth to to learn singing in, in church and in worship but you mm-hmm. know that's pretty awesome how you got i guess recruited you know singing the national anthem at your uh, basketball game <laughs> there I know it's funny, but I'm, I mean, it's crazy that just looking back now, I've been in Nashville uh, almost five years, which is crazy. Uh, I moved here right after I turned, I had just turned 20 and I didn't know what I was doing or what, I just crazy moved to Nashville and here I am. Yeah, that's definitely, I mean, you know, so many artists, I have a lot of friends that are independent and they, you know, living in Nashville now from all over the country and they, it's, you know, they they come out of a small town and they're the, the rock stars of the town and you get to Nashville and they're like, you know, everybody can sing, everybody mm-hmm. can play and it's such a, uh, 
like Jason Aldean says, it's a crazy town, you know. It is, it is, but there's so much talent, and it's crazy just to see, since I've moved here, all of, you know, my friends or friends of friends that have, um, you know, have hits on the radio now, or I'm driving yeah. down the radio, and I see their name, and I'm like, that is so, it's just so cool, and I know to, like, to the outside world, a lot of, um, outside of music, it people is, don't really it is. see that. It's very so. cool, and I'm a huge lyric nerd, I guess you could say. I love songwriting and lyrics, and um, yeah. one of my friends is from Louisiana Guy, and that's uh, CJ Solar, and he's yeah. in Nashville now, and uh, just people don't know a lot of, you know, the writing that goes into, but he had wrote the number one song. He got his first number one with Up Down, you know. That, I know. And that's, then that was awesome. he's got uh, another great artist mike ryan out of texas him mm-hmm. and mike wrote a song called damn good goodbye and it's hit number one on texas radio and uh yep. it's, it's just uh, guys like both of those guys. yeah guys like that and and of course women too so many talented songwriters and you know artists uh mm-hmm. And I love seeing the, you know, behind the scenes. I'm very much of a, a, a nerd in that. I, like, I get into it, like you said. You, you, you hear the radio and you hear, you're like, I know what this song came from. You know, I know. Mm-hmm. And that's why, pretty much why I like to do these little, the, the interviews and, and learn. So people like us can, you know, hear the behind the scenes of things. Well, that's what it takes. And that's why I'm thankful for you and, like, you know, other people that have playlists that kind of you know dig in deep to look for you know the songs that aren't maybe on the radio or the most popular playlist and to bring those to life so other people can hear them and um it's a cool thing that it de- definitely so back backtracking a little bit you uh what was some of your musical influences growing up obviously you said you, you led worship and stuff like that so some christian music but what was some of your, uh, you know, growing up, teenage years that you listened to a lot, or any genre, you know, artist? I'd say um, Lee and Womack and Allison Krauss are two people that I've listened to growing up. And, uh, and I mean, 90s country, for a woman that was in the country, uh, was just, I feel like, a big boom for uh, women because Shan- there's so many women were on the radio. Yeah, Shania, um, I mean. Oh, yeah. The Jody Messina, all yeah. the, and so I just loved listening to that music, and my parents, um, I guess they they loved listening to it too. So that's kind of how I got started. And um, but I would say those two people um, are two people that I really look up to and love their music and their lyrics and their songs. So you moved to Nashville. You've been there about you said five years. Mm-hmm. What what is give us a, a crazy Nashville story? What was your first, I guess, wow or crazy? You know, maybe it's some someone you've seen or or just something. Um, so something that just just something that just popped. In. There's, a, I mean, I could go on and on and on about my stories in Nashville that happened. Um, and the funniest, I feel like the funniest things happen to me. So there's that. But I would say one like really cool thing, but just to show how small Nashville is. Um, I was in a writer's round for um, this organization that I'm a part of, Caring Hearts Ministry, and um, we just had like a little mini fundraiser. We had some great writers. I was um, really happy to be a part of it, and I'm like, you know, just sing it, and Kobe Calais walks in, and I'm just like, you know, you see country artists all over town a yeah. lot, and you know, the Nashville ways, you know, you just see them, you don't, you don't talk to them, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so she walked in, and I would say I got like I, that was my like, my first like starstruck moment, I wow. guess you would say. But um, that was really cool. I'm sure some other crazy memories would come to mind if I really thought about it. And I mean, I've, I've I like to look at the under the underdogs, I guess you could say, of Nashville. And, and uh, what are some of the spots? I mean, I know they have so many different venues in Nashville where pe- where country music's played, but the spots that you could say to, for the public when you when they if they go you know to Nashville to, yeah. to vacation uh, obviously everybody knows of you know uh, whiskey jam and all that but what are some of the spots that you would say kind of underground you know talent that it, it's it's a great place to venue to go 
So there are so many, um, like you said, there's so many, like every night there's a writer's round going on in Nashville. It, like at every, I mean, in Midtown, if you just walk down the street, you can walk in Tin Roof, Doghouse. Alley Polo. Taps. And, yeah, yeah, Alley Taps is a nice, um, that's a really cool place. It's kind of like underground. Yeah. The, that's really cool. Um, a place, I would say in Frisky Frogs, they've, uh, they're added now to the, to Mumbrian Street um, music and their sound is amazing um, and it's kind of like a good place I guess to go and actually like listen to um, music but I play a lot on those streets and I know that there's so many people that I've listened to that are amazing writers yeah. and I know a lot of people go to the listening room um, but if you just you know free to play like people are singing their hearts out singing their songs that they wrote and um it's nice to have people in there that you know want to come and listen to us. Definitely, I mean, I got like I mentioned a few buddies that they live up there, and uh, you know, Dawson there was Brian Frazier. Yeah. Uh, all those guys are constantly playing, you know, and and, and those little underground things, and uh, it's that's why I try to ask questions about it because the people who go to Nashville, they want to see the big time, you know, they want to obviously yeah. the rhyming and all that history, but. There's so mm-hmm. many cool places and talent that you, you know, the Iceman is one of my, uh, he's one of the persons that I look up to because I'm trying to do kind of what he's doing. And he, you know, awesome. he, he really paved the way. And, you know, I had the opportunity to do an interview with him and that was so cool. But, oh, wow. yeah, on the podcast a few episodes back, but that's the type of, you know, you go to Nashville and see the un, the ones that aren't broadcasted all over the world. That, mm-hmm. that, that's what I love about it. There's, um, there's one called The Local, um, yeah. and it's, it's, uh, it's off the, like, you know, it's off the path a little bit. It's, um, in West End area, but, um, there's always music that's going on there, great bands, um, so that's another one of my favorite places to go watch, um, but yeah, there's so many, I think there's like an app, it's called OMG, I'm a Songwriter, <laughs> or not an app, um, a Instagram page, and they post, like, uh, daily of the lineups for where people are playing at certain venues and stuff. So that's always a good way to know who's playing where. Do you do a lot of uh, playing? Do you travel out and play shows, or are you just mostly in, t- in Nashville right now? Um, this summer I was in uh, the beginning of fall. Right now I've kind of uh, been in Nashville, which has been kind of nice um, to be here. But I've been playing... Um, I have a good friend, his name, he's actually from Louisiana, um, his name is Stephen Paul, and um, he, we play together a lot, like a cover acoustic shows, um, and we also sing our own music, but we just kind of play wherever and anywhere, you know, that people want us to come play, and that's been really fun to reach new people and travel different places. Definitely. Well, let's get into the single that you have right now. What's oh, yeah. what's the story behind it? Is it something that you wrote original song, or is it something that came to you? Yeah, I uh, I wrote this with two of my really good friends, uh, Katie Heilig and Carissa Lee. Um, I we were writing this day, and you know we're throwing around a few ideas, and I've had this one in my phone um, called "Living the Life," and basically meaning I guess with quotations around it like living the life which meaning not necessarily the life that you would think someone's living um and I kind of just threw that around and kind of told them I'm like you know how we're riding here and you know everyone thinks oh we got out of our small town we're living the life you know we're going out every night we can you know there's so many things we can do here and um you know playing music and everything and it's kind of so I kind of told that to them and I hit them like yes because you know we're all we were all from small towns and um I just I wanted it to be a feel-good song because I feel like I am living the life I'm living the life I want to live like I love writing I love music I love Nashville um but it is like a little bit of a struggle it's not a whole lot of struggle actually what am I talking about and um just because you never know you know you're basically putting uh, building up a career on faith and you know hope that people can relate or listen to your songs uh, definitely all it takes is one one spark i mean you look mm-hmm. at uh, look at all of all i mean one of my f- one of my favorites that's now taking over the world is luke combs and i was listening to him from, oh yeah you know just takes one one good uh i guess one good 
radio hitting and bam, they finally, you know, so many people go mm-hmm. under it. But we're going we're going to play yeah. living the life. We have it oh. we have it with in studio right now. And like I said, it's been on our chart Spotify top 40, but we're going to play it for the folks and we're going to let you well, inter- introduce appreciate it. That. We'll let you bring it in and introduce it. All right, this is uh, Living the Life, my first single, released it this summer, and uh, it's about me, Ted Wilkinson. Every time that I go back, they ask me how I've been. Have you got that record yet? You're going to call it quits. Must be nice, stay out all night, and I'll worry about tomorrow. Singing on the Broadway lights, it doesn't seem that hard. I just bite my tongue, cause all I wanna say, darling, you wouldn't last one day. Miss Taylor Wilkinson is in studio <laughs> living the life in Nashville. Living it. So is this a song that is going to be on an upcoming EP or an album are you working on? Um, I So I actually am working on, I've been writing a ton since I've been in Nashville and uh, I have a few songs that I've been working on that I want to get out and I know whenever I play around, whether I'm in Nashville or out, there's a couple songs that's you know, they stand out to people and they really want to hear them. And those are the songs that you want to release, obviously, you know. Um, but so I think at the beginning of sometime, beginning of next year, um, we'll be working on maybe another single and then an EP. You know, I don't know. You're just... You're just living the life. I'm just living the <laughs> life, yeah. But um, it's crazy that... Um, it's funny, also, I said this uh, to some people back home and even to go with the song when i recorded this song i didn't go to some big fancy studio you know or whatever my friend lalo guzman who's very talented um we recorded that in his living room and he played everything on that and so um it's just crazy because you would think that oh like going to some nice studio (laughs) but that's um, awesome well it's definitely well he has a very uh, acoustically uh, you know good living room because it definitely came out great oh yeah it's funny i know i want to i'm going to share a, a video hopefully i kind of want to show behind the scenes of that just because it's, it's just something cool to you know not everyone knows how it works or you know what you can do or what you can't do so 
So, do you go to have a lot of opportunities to go back home? I mean, these holidays are coming up. It's November second, so everybody's going Christmas crazy right now. But oh yeah, you... well see, I'm I'm such a homebody, so like I find any excuse and every excuse to come home. So if I can even just like call the weekend before and try to book a show, then I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of your hobbies outside of music when you get when you go back home? What are some of the things that that you love to do? Obviously, you mentioned you played basketball and sports. Uh... Yeah, I really like being active. So. Um... I like any kind of sports to play. That's fun. Uh, I really like hunting. So, like, I grew up in small town, Arkansas. My dad is a farmer, and I grew up hunting with him and um, friends. And so every time I go back like this, um, I'm really looking forward to a couple weeks whenever duck season opens up. I know deer season's about to be open, too. Yeah, so. I'm very... Uh... I'm very jealous of you for being from Arkansas because I'm a huge <laughs> duck hunter and Arkansas is the duck hey, capital. Have to come up. I've I'm been a few lying. times. I've been a few times and it's uh it's something if you love the, to duck hunt, you you have to make a trip to Arkansas because it's unreal. It really is. It really is. Here's your free invitation. You yeah, can come to I could, Arkansas. Anytime. I could do a whole show on that just alone. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, definitely. But uh yeah, that's, I mean, holidays are coming up. There, there's, I, I haven't got the chance to ask this, but I, this Christmas craze is going on. Do you get into the Christmas music? Like, rec- would you ever record a Christmas song or album or something like that? So, I jam to Christmas music. Like, I'm surprised that uh, my roommate doesn't have it playing today because it's Halloween is over. But, um, no, I love Christmas music, and I was actually thinking about that today. Um, about, I know eventually, one of these days, I'm going to do a Christmas album. Um, but in the meantime, I might do, you know, a professional recording on Maybe post like a YouTube video or something. Do some acoustic or something. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Getting the Christmas spirit. Yeah, I'm not a Grinch by any means, but I just like <laughs> I like to celebrate Christmas in December. But everybody in America <laughs> and my girlfriend is a Christmas freak. Like she's celebrating Christmas after the day after Christmas. She's buying Christmas stuff, so I have to deal with it. But uh, I definitely. Uh, you're the first one I've asked about the Christmas music because I know it's yeah. coming. It's a coming in full swing here soon. Yeah, and I was thinking, I'm like, I don't even know what song to choose because there's so many good ones. So just, but I, it was my thought. I have thought about it. Well, that's awesome. We'll definitely be uh, looking forward to that. I know you're going to have something coming in. I mean, another single coming. You know, everybody can keep up with you on your uh, social yeah. media, right? Yeah, I have um, I have a Facebook. It's Taylor Wilkinson uh, Music, and then also have my Instagram, which I would say is that I'm more active on. Um, I used to be really terrible at social media. I'm getting better, um, but uh, my Instagram is Tay Wilk T A Y W I L K. Just make it nice and easy for everybody. But um, yeah, I just I'm looking forward to the new music I'm going to put out. I'll you know, live the life. I was overwhelmed by the support that I've gotten from that. And so I just can't wait for everyone to hear what else I've got been working on. Definitely. Now, do you have like some merchandise and shirts and stuff like it shows that you sell? So I actually have been working on that. Unfortunately, it got pushed to the side for me doing other things, but I have been working on that again, and so I will have some hopefully by like Thanksgiving time. Um, just working on the logos and all that jazz, you know. Awesome! I always ask that because I always tell people support the artists by buying their merchandise, yeah. their songs. That's what gets you guys, you know, gets yeah. you guys bread and butter. I mean, that's that's y'all y'all pay. It's, so support, yeah, for sure. Support independent artists and support independent business small business that's what we're all about here to buy yeah country well i appreciate that so much yes ma'am definitely so we really appreciate you coming on the show and you're welcome back anytime i mean mm-hmm. you're you're doing big things uh, representing the the uh i guess you the razorback state if you want to call it 
Oh and, yeah, we'll take. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's it's awesome to have uh, you know to to know have connections in Nashville, and, and it's just one big melting pot of people that you know just talent. So we definitely look forward to. I know I look forward to to what you got coming next, and uh, yeah. hopefully you can come down. You know, we'll get Dawson and CJ and them to bring I you know. down here. Get you. Yeah, we do need a trip. Or if you're coming to Nashville, yeah, know, or any, yeah. anybody's coming, just shout me out. I'll let you know if I'm playing or or who to go see. Exactly. And uh, we, uh, I, I'll give you the the floor to to if you have any thanks or shout outs you want to tell mom hot whatever you want to say I, you know <laughs> I'll let you uh, let you have the stage here. Um, I just want to say first of all thanks to you for placing me on y'all's um, y'all's playlist because I know there's so many like we said there's so many talented people out there and I'm just thankful that people you know put out music and people are you know they can relate to it or they're liking it. Um, and basically just to anyone that's bought it or streamed it or, you know, follows me or supports me that it just means a lot. And, um, it just really kind of makes me know that I'm on the right track and to keep on keeping on. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. We, we support independent artists and that's, that's something everybody, I think, uh, can take to the take to the bank support independent artists and check out what they got because uh there's a lot of undiscovered yeah. talent out there i agree 100 percent. and i always i always have to take a little time to thank our partners and sponsors and you know oh yeah definitely want to thank those guys first and foremost southern sound outfitters it is a veteran owned company and they have a lot of great apparel, but they also do a lot of big things for uh, up-and-coming independent artists in the Texas scene. So check out their website at southernsoundoutfitter.com. Buy some merchandise from them. Follow them on social media as they always share and repost uh, up-and-coming artists, like I mentioned, from the Texas area. Also, we mentioned uh, hunting earlier. Uh, my buddy Corey Adams with Swamp Assassin. Louisiana uh, company, but uh, he's actually moving a where their warehouse. They opened a new warehouse in Mississippi, and they're having some crazy closeout sales right now on all kinds of great merchandise, hats, shirts, caps, all that at SwampAssassin.com. Check them out right now. Get get in on them deals, and then also I have to you know I I, I like to hunt, but I'm also on the farm and ranch and. We got to give a shout out to Rodeo Time Incorporated, Dale Brisby. Get yourself some Dale wear. Go to dalebrisby.com. Get you some Dale wear. And uh, I, it's it's always sun shining and bright out when you whether you're hunting, whether you're fishing, whether you're ranching, whatever you're doing. And I don't leave the house without my pair of Beck sunglasses. And check out Beck sunglasses. They have all kind of apparel, but they they really have some high quality. Whether you like aviators, whether you like whatever style you suits you, check them out at BeckSunglasses.com. And uh, definitely shout out to the Texas Country Music Association. We are members of, of them. And shout out to Nashville. I mean, this is a Nash. We got a Nashville, you know, native in here. So shout out to Nashville. Shout out to the Iceman. Shout out to all the venues out there that are, uh, you know, supporting these independent up-and-coming artists you know so definitely got to give a shout out to them yeah and that's pretty much the end of my rant for my my uh <laughs> advertising so uh taylor we thank you for coming on and uh we really uh like i said tell everybody if you're part of the bcma family you want to come back on anytime you can get, oh, yeah. give me a phone call away well thank you so much and uh thanks for having me and i'll definitely be talking talking to you again soon awesome everybody we uh we're gonna close up this episode be sure to check out taylor and all of her social medias we'll be posting links to all of that and also get her song living a life and be on the lookout for what she has coming in 2019